The show starts in three, two, one. And there goes that man's jacha. <laughs> oh my God, did you see that? <laughs> America's team? Yeah, right. Oh, baby, it's a big day in sports. There's nothing like battling it out with your teammates all season long to go win a championship. Green Bay's got it this year. Huge move for him. I think it's going to be a game changer. We have a lot to talk about this busy week in the sports world. Welcome to the In a League of Their Own podcast. The In a League of Their Own podcast is brought to you by Golf Kicks. Screw your shoes. By Anchor, the easiest way to make a podcast. Rep Sports. By Smooth My Balls. And by Streamer Loot. Check out the In the League of Their Own merch line today. Welcome to the show. Let's see what Austin and Colin are diving into today. Yeah, all star festivities kick off tonight with the Home Run Derby. Um, we get to see Mr. Unicorn himself, Shohei Otani, hit some dingers and see if he's this year's champion. But uh, we'll talk about that in a little while here. What is going on over in the NFL? So there's just a handful of uh, quick things here to mention. Uh, first off the list, Washington football teams, new name and logo will have no linkage to Native American imagery or anything related to that, um, President Jason Wright says. So that's kind of awesome how they've moved away from that in accordance to um, just the times that we live in nowadays. And they're going to pick something else. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they end up selecting as a team name or whatnot. I kind of like Washington football team, but um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. <laughs> Um, Blake Martinez, um, is a huge Pokemon collecting fan. Uh, turns out he's been doing this for years now. And, um, he was just talking about how the card business kind of has came back around and that's at the forefront right now. So all those people who have kept onto their cards from the time that they were little kids, uh, when they were a huge thing, I'm sure you can go through your booklets and folders of all the cards that you got now. And I'm sure, you probably have one card that's worth something. Um, we are in a collection type of world now where everybody wants everything, every single piece of everything. So if you had got one of those, you could be in a good position to get paid. <clears throat> also, ex-Arkansas Razorback and New England Patriot D lineman Jake Biquette is making a run for the Senate seat. Um, turns out he has $1.1 million of funding towards running for the Senate, and that was reported back in April. So... Who knows how much more he has now, but uh, that's awesome to see people moving on from the sports world, wanting to get involved in politics as it's relatable as it's a team effort. And if you have everybody who's in there working for the same team, who knows what our government is possible and capable of, you know, doing for the people here um, in, in this wonderful country. So that's some cool news there. And then also just got to mention real quick, another person uh, made a mistake here. Barcavius Mingo, um, former Atlanta Falcon, was um, arrested in Texas after indecency with a child charge. Um, was looking at the reports, didn't really give a description of what happened. It was just in Texas, according to the law. Anybody under the age of 17 years old is a child. So whatever the situation was, don't really know. But he was in contact or whatever with a, with a child technically and according to state law it is punish punishable up to 20 years in prison so um the atlanta falcons let him go right after following the arrest and then his lawyer actually came out and said um basically how the atlanta falcons are a shitty organization for not having any trust in their players going through a process how they immediately just cut bait and don't even like try to fight and protect this guy uh, after they have him under contract or whatever, you know, you'd think that they'd maybe try to step in and help him out in a way since he is technically an employee. Mm -hmm. But in this case, um, looks like they're cutting bait real quick and they don't want to be around any of that. So we will see what happens uh, in the NFL here going forward. Um, still no Rogers news. Uh, also have to mention at the SPs, I thought that trolling of him was kind of funny um all those people who played a part in that that was really good so yeah wait to see what kind of happens here um mini camp starts in three weeks and yeah we will go from there so Sounds... also I'm, i gotta mention um if we do have the opportunity um yesterday 
took a long shot, potentially might be getting with Kurt Benneker, the third string quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. So I will get you guys more information on that as we go forward here. All right. I like the sounds of that. Um, yeah, so then I didn't have any NFL things to mention uh, for today. So um, since it is Monday, that means it is time for our no segment. And this uh, this Monday segment is going to be legend or no. So the way that today is going to work, rather than testing your trivia, um, it's going to be more or less picking your brain and letting you decide um, your, your own thoughts on these people. Basically, I'm going to give you an athlete and you're going to tell me if they're a legend in that sport or not. And then give me just a sentence or two as to why yes or no. Sounds good. So I've got 10 athletes, two from, uh, all five major sports, uh, football, basketball, hockey, uh, bat basketball and golf. All right. So kicking things off here, Russell Westbrook legend or no. Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, he is a legend, um, a regular season legend. Um, what he does in the regular season is beyond, and then his triple doubles, what he's done there is beyond um, what he can do. Hopefully he has a chance to get to, a, you know, go for a title before he ends up retiring. But even not, he's probably the best regular season player we've ever seen. All right. All right. Next athlete, we have Rory McIlroy, legend or no? i'm gonna say no um grandy has he has won a few majors he was um a huge name in golf for a while um probably about five six years ago he's kind of half fell off since he did make that number one world uh golf rank spot so it just goes to show that he's not consistent enough to be that dominant at all times granted He's always, you know, any tournament that he goes and he could easily win it. It just is a matter of putting everything together, which is why golf is so difficult. So I'm going to say no. All right. Uh, Ryan Braun, legend or no? Uh, maybe a Brewers legend, but no. Um, hell of a career. He was a great outfielder. I mean, doing everything that he did coming from Miami. He was one of the most dominant players in college <laughs> baseball. Um, getting to the pros, I, I would put him on that list if he if he wouldn't have gotten caught using uh, substances. If he wouldn't have got suspended for using the PEDs that he used, I would say he would be. But because he did in an era where that's not allowed anymore and he got caught, I'm going to say no. All right. All right. Um, Marshawn Lynch, legend or no? Yes. Um, just with his off the field antics, with his on the field antics, um, arguably one of the greatest short down running backs of all time. Um, dude does he does it all, and he's a, a great person as well off, off the field. So I'm gonna say yeah. Okay, uh, halfway point here, Mark Andre Fleury, legend or no? Yes, he is a legend. Um, his 19th season in the NHL, and he's pretty much been in the playoffs almost every single season. It's tremendous what he's done. He's won a handful of Stanley Cups. Now he's tried to do it, tried to carry Vegas to one, and I wouldn't say it was on him letting the team down. I'd say the offense, his their team couldn't score. So I'd say he's, yeah, arguably he's probably one of the greatest goalies, top five of all time. All right, moving on here to Clay Thompson, legend or no? It's a tough one. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to pick a bunch of guys kind of like that are not solidified, but it could be on the fence as to where it's kind of hard. I think so. Yeah. He's probably one of the greatest three point shooters of all time. Um, and he's got three titles. So yeah, I'd, I'd say he's probably a legend. All right. Uh, Mr. Mike Trout, legend or no, definitely a legend. Um, uh, Arguably one of the greatest baseball players ever to play the game. So it's been a treat watching him so far, and hopefully he gets back soon healthy. Yeah. 
the only reason I put him on this list is because he hasn't won a title. So it's kind of one of those ones where it's just people can use that as leverage to put him not in that legendary category. So uh, Patrick Mahomes, legend or no? Yeah, my homeboy is definitely a legend. Um, unbelievable what he does playing the game of football. He's taking what Rodgers kind of did coming in and Russell Wilson when they were coming into the league and kind of solidified as it's their time. He's kind of taken that and taken it to another level. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to say legend. All right, last two here. Connor McDavid, legend or no? Yeah, he's arguably the greatest hockey player to ever play. Granted, he hasn't, he's not on a team that can win a championship right now. But him himself individually as an athlete, yes, definitely a legend. All right. And this one's going to pull out your heartstrings a little bit. Mr. Ricky Fowler, legend or no? Unfortunately, I'm going to say no. Even though he's Ricky's my boy. Um, I just don't think he's got it done in consistently enough in the big moments of the big tournaments. Um, seems like he does fine outside of majors, but when it gets to the majors, it seems like he can't crack like the top 10. It seems like he's stuck between 10 and 20. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know, but as of recently and what I've seen watching him, uh, it looks like he might be, making a comeback here. I shouldn't really say a comeback because he's a good golfer. Everybody's a good golfer, but I mean, it looks like he's finally whatever slump that he was going through of not having it. It seems like he's turning that around here. Sounds good. Yeah. That wraps up uh, today's or no segments. Um, again, every episode, we got a new segment uh, next Monday. Um, Austin's going to have a segment for me to do. So, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, Moving on then to the NBA. Again, NBA Finals are uh, in full swing. The Milwaukee Bucks kind of silence all the haters in game three, taking it by 20. I think it was 120 to 100 was the final. Um, yeah, it was a great game. And like they say, or everybody kind of ha has doubt about the Bucks that um, the series doesn't start until road team gets a win. So, um, Bucks take care of business at home. They'll be back Wednesday. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on last night's game? It was a great game. Um, we made the, the little detailed changes that we needed to make playing the ball, um, down in the paint, kind of letting Giannis go downhill as much as he wanted all game. It really did help that we were targeting getting after Aiden. Uh, we got him into foul trouble early in the game and that kind of really, I, in my opinion, was the big swing in the game. Like, that was the big change in the game, having him in foul trouble because they can't lose him for, you know, if if, they, if Frank Kaminsky's got to play all the minutes, Bucks are, are smashing them. So mm -hmm. um, that is something to look forward to going forward. Um, we should keep feeding it, putting the pressure on Aiden to make a play and see if we can pick up a foul or not. Also, it was interesting to see how Monty Williams sat Devin Booker for the whole fourth quarter after he was struggling. Um, and after the game, he kind of said that it wasn't really – like a lot of people were speculating that it was just for rest to come back for the next game, how he's been kind of doing a lot. And after the game, Monty Williams just said that he didn't have it tonight and he just wasn't in it. So he wasn't really helping the team. Yeah. Um, and now – Bucks have, I don't know, that was a huge counter punch that we made. Now we need to, we have to win this next, we have to win this next game. By the Otherwise, same, by the same margin, I think it's got to be by double digits to kind of see, I think a win's take, a win. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, wins a win, obviously in the NBA finals, but to kind of keep that momentum as to the Suns had two pretty dominant wins, games one and two. Yeah, but look at their players the last game. None of their players made over 20 points, I don't think. No, yeah, I actually have it up here, and that was a thing you had mentioned, kind of Aiton being in foul trouble, one of the big things. They didn't allow a Suns player to take more than 14 shots, which is huge. Yeah, the defense is the best in the league. You, you, you transition that over if they make – if somebody went 100% for 14 shots, they're making, if they're all two point shots, 28. 
that's that's an av- that's an eh game. Um, if it's all three pointers, that's what forty two points. That's a still a, 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 a that's a good game, but that's again making every single one of your shots. So basically, yeah, Booker went three for fourteen. Um, again, like you mentioned, he struggled. He had ten. Chris Paul led led the team with nineteen, eight for fourteen. Um, yeah, so the most shots anybody took on that team was fourteen. And then you look on the other side, uh, Giannis took 23, Middleton 14, Holiday 14. Um, again, as much as, I, as much as I give him flat, Connington off the bench again, hit some clutch threes, one uh, to end the, the going to halftime, I think it was, with like three, 3.2 left or whatever, he hit a three-pointer. Um, yeah, I mean, everybody coming off the benches, but then again, Especially Portis, dude. Portis, he, yeah, he Bobby. He played his balls off yesterday. And the crowd just loves him, too. Like, the crowd literally chanting for that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he, he's a great player to bring off the bench. It, it, I wish that he would get a little bit more minutes. But this last game, he did get more minutes than he has gotten the first two games combined. So um, maybe that's another thing that Bud has looked to see the, where we have an advantage and put put him in. It's just like Ante Dacumbo's brother too. Uh, whenever he comes in the game, he's full of energy, and he's a really tough defender. Mm-hmm. Um, he was all over Chris Paul, and I believe he forced a turnover at the end of the end of the quarter. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thanasis played two minutes, uh, went over two from the field, but he had three rebounds. So to have three rebounds in two minutes, that's that's pretty efficient. So, um. Yeah, I don't know. It was a great it was a great game to watch. Again, it was very close through the first like quarter and a half, and then the Bucks went on a run to end the quarter, and then I think they went on like a twenty to two run at one point as well. I think it was twenty seven to zero actually, because they talked and, about the Bucks went on two huge runs in the game, and that was mm-hmm. that's the difference. But Suns are getting Tory Craig. Is he set to be back the next game? So. That's another big player that's back for them that eats up a lot of minutes and usually has about 10 to 15 points. Yeah. Um, yeah, that think, series will be back on Wednesday, I think. Do you think Giannis can carry 40 points throughout the, reg- the rest of the finals? He's done it so far. He's been, uh, aside from, what was it, Shaq, to be the only player to – in your for in their first three NBA Finals games to have a uh, be averaging thirty points and ten rebounds, only him and Shaq are in that category together. Um, his, Jordan's his, the only ever to do forty four games in the finals. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another topic of conversation with that is Giannis at the free throw line um, went thirteen of seventeen at the free throw line last night. Um, he shortened up his his routine. Uh, looks a lot less clunky. Um, and the crowd's not, and the crowd's not counting too. But um, yeah, hopefully when they go back to Phoenix for game five, that kind of carries over where he kind of keeps that same routine. Um, and if he speeds things up, maybe the, the, the crowd like will start to die down more and more when he goes to the free throw line where they realize he's not taking – within a second or two of that um, violation of taking too much time. If he's cutting that in half or seven, eight seconds, even last night, he was like between six to eight seconds um, versus like 10, 11, 12 seconds. Like he usually is. I think this is going to be something Giannis is going to see the rest of his career, every single place he goes. I mean, if he doesn't change it, yeah. But if he like, if he change, if he even so, the crowd still <laughs> tries to make make a miss. You know, going against the home crowd, they're doing everything they can to get. Yeah. In. So, seems like it works when they do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't shorten it up, yeah, he's gonna deal with it for a very long time. But, um, because I mean, I feel like most like most of your like n- around ninety percent free throw shooters like. Like Curry, like Thompson, like Paul. Um, they just get the ball and shoot. Yeah, they catch it one dribble, like two dribbles, or just catch and shoot. So it's like at most five seconds they're holding it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. He'll figure it out hopefully. If not, then yeah, he's gonna be dealing with the crowd for a long time. But 
But yeah, um, so they'll be back on Wednesday. They're taking um, two days in between um, every game now instead of it one day, um, regardless of because usually if it when it switches from one venue to another, they'll take off two days instead of one. But they're just taking off two days in between every single game to drag it out for whatever reason. So um, that's dumb. Yeah. So they don't play till Wednesday. They don't play till Wednesday, and then they after that they don't play till Saturday, and then after that they don't play till Tuesday. <laughs> That's kind of sucks for the people who are playing in the Olympics, Devin Booker and Chris Middleton. Uh, looks like they they're probably not even going to be able to go then. Yeah, it starts if... on the twenty third. Well, let's see here. Game seven would be the 22nd. So if it goes to game seven, they'd basically finish Go the straight game. from game seven. Don't even be able hit to their fist, with Hit their champions. fist bumps with, yeah, with their buddies. Like, oh, yeah, we want to chip. All right, I'm going to go to Tokyo. <laughs> um, yeah, if it goes that far, if it, if it goes it's past gonna, games. It's going to be six or seven. Yeah. Well, if it finishes in game six, I could see them possibly – yeah, because then that give them three days to kind of – but at the same time, if they do their parade and stuff and media and all, the, all that. the time difference going over there. Yeah. It's like a day. Yeah, That's they're like almost a full, a full day full ahead. Day. Yeah, I don't know. I've, yeah. USA basketball sucks as it is anyway. Yep. <laughs> For those who didn't see um, – they had an exhibition game over the weekend with Nigeria and lost uh, 90 to 87. They're tw- like 29 and a half point favorites going into that game. And I want, I think that they held, was it Durant, um, Beal, and uh, it was like the 27 Tatum to nine, nine for 30 combined yeah, that they held 27 them. 27 total. Yeah. So, um, Again, it's just an exhibition game. And also, I mean, everybody expects a team like that to just blow everybody out. Sometimes having a bunch of all-stars on one team together doesn't work out. I mean, look at the Nets, for instance. Yeah, yes, they were great offensively, but when you have three guys who are great offensively on the court, when the ball switches to the other side, you got three three of your five guys can't play good defense, you're going to give up a lot of points too. Up until the end of the season, the Nets are almost going to be the first team in NBA history to be the – um, number one rated offense and the number 30th ranked defense in history. So, um, so yeah, um, we'll see if they kind of sort things out. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they'll still get on that podium and win a gold or win silver. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I don't know if you had any other things with the NBA to throw out there. No, I did not. All right, then switching over to the MLB here. Um, the Brewers get swept over the weekend by the Cincinnati Reds with the help of some questionable officiating. Um, yesterday's game had uh, a couple ejections in it. I believe it was uh, both managers and then Yelich got ejected um, on a very questionable call. He threw down a bunt, uh, beat out the throw to first, and... Um, on his way back to the bag, uh, the first baseman tagged him, and the the first base line judge called him out. Um, watching the replay, he never made a turn like he was going to advance to second. He just literally ran, ran a straight line, turned around, and was walking back. Got tagged. He but got did, met. Did he turn towards second base though? I mean. If you turn, if you turn towards second base, that's all it takes. You have to turn towards the foul territory. I don't remember if he did or not. Yeah, because if he did and then got tagged, technically that that is an out. Yeah, I don't know. But regardless, there's there's a a couple things over the weekend with that series that kind of were getting under people's skin with the the ump calls and stuff like that, but. Regardless, the Brewers still sit at the top of the NL Central going into the All-Star break, and um, tempers will be flying as they come out of the All-Star break. They're going to be playing the Reds again, so we'll see how that goes. Um, After a 22-run effort Saturday, uh, the Dodgers um, finished a series against the D-backs. Max Muncy hits a three-run walk-off home run to give them, uh, again, that series win. Uh, they lost game one against the D-backs and then had their 22-1 to win Saturday. So um, 
weird to say that the Dodgers need uh, without that walk off would have lost the series to the D backs if they if that went to happen. So uh, the Astros put up six runs in the ninth yesterday to overcome a seven two deficit behind a Jose Altuve three run home run as well. Um, Atlanta Braves star Ronald Acuna Jr. suffered a, a torn ACL Saturday chasing a fly ball. Uh, he'll unfortunately miss the rest of the season, and the Braves currently sit third in the NL East, four games back from the Mets. So um, they got some work to do with uh, their all-star there. And then the last point of the MLB tonight, the all-star festivities kick off with the home run derby uh, at Coors Field in Denver. Uh, this year's participants are uh, Angels Shohei Otani, Rangers Joey Gallo, uh, Oakland A's Matt Olson, the Royals Salvador Perez, Mets Pete Alonso, Orioles Trey Mancini, the Rockers Tre- Rockies Trevor Story, and Nationals Juan Soto. So pretty stacked lineup there. Um, obviously, Otani is kind of, um, I'm assuming he's the favorite um, to, to win the whole thing. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. And then the All-Star game is going to be tomorrow night as well. I believe it's 6.30 uh, is going to be first pitch at that one. So that's all I got from uh, the weekend for baseball. I have, I have one quick thing here for the people who uh, got the chance to watch Astros and the Yankees um, yesterday. Yankees trolling all game long after hitting home runs and banging on the garbage and all that shit. And then turns out Houston Astros six run ninth inning. And they win eight to seven. And they were laughing after at they were laughing at him after the game was over. It was hilarious. So fuck you, Yankees. <laughs> yeah. I always hated the Yankees. Jeter is the only I love Jeter. I love Mariano Rivera. But other than that, I hate the Yankees just because they buy their team. Yeah. The Dodgers are kind of turning to that team too, where they just got loads of money and they just go out and get whoever they want, kind of too. But right, but at least they haven't been that their whole career. You know what I no, mean? Oh yeah, it hasn't yeah. Been like that for forever. It's only been the last probably five years, and it's worked for them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even though hockey's over, how if you got any any uh, points to throw out there? Yeah, I do. Um, broadcaster Pierre Maguire, who's normally seen in between the glass during NHL games has been hired by the Ottawa Senators as a senior VP of player development. So that is pretty interesting news. A lot of people are kind of um, wondering, like, why? Uh, He's been a broadcaster for forever, and now he's going to leave the booth and go work for Ottawa. Uh, It's just an interesting move. So uh, shout out to Pierre, I guess, for doing that. Um, Seattle head coach, Seattle Kraken head coach, Dave Haxtall, Talking about the expansion draft, um, he says that their team expects Vegas-sized expectations. Like, they're going for the cup year one. Um, so, that's should be good, you know, promising if you're going to be a Seattle Kraken fan um, going forward here. Um, that's pretty awesome that you have a coach who's saying we're going for it from day one. So, um, that's what you want there. Um, Dave Haxall was one of the greatest college hockey coaches. He coached for North Dakota came to my flyers kind of did a little bit of a shitty job at the flyers. Um, and then now he's getting a second chance in the NHL with the Seattle Kraken here. So let's see what he can do over there. Um, former NHLer Steven Johns finishes cross co- cross country rollerblade trip. Um, he retired from the NHL after suffering many like head injuries. Um, he talked about his bouts with depression and mental illnesses and just wanted to do something to make him feel, um, I guess, good about himself because he was going through a rough time. Started on the East Coast and ended up all the way over at the Pacific Ocean. Um, took him, I think it was 15 days, I think, for him and another player to rollerblade across the country. So um, that was pretty awesome. If you want to go uh, see some of his content, you can go Stephen Jones on Instagram, and he's got a whole bunch of stuff posted about that. Uh, and you can check that out. And then the last thing I have here is um, Tampa Bay Lightning is you having a limited edition beer using ice from the rink. 
um, during the Stanley Cup game. Um, that will be made into ice cubes that will be put into your drinks. So you can have some Stanley Cup official ice in your beer if that's something that you want. Mm, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Talk, you're talking about the Seattle Kraken. That might be my, my new – I might switch teams just because the only teams I've really followed has ever been the Flyers because you like them and then the Capitals because my father-in-law follows them. And that's kind of – I mean, the, basically the two reasons I got into hockey was the two of you because you, just talking with you, you're a big hockey guy, and then talking to him, he's a big hockey guy, and that's kind of how I got into it. So, I don't know. It's – like you said, it's kind of – if they're going to have that kind of that Vegas effect of going the distance plus – Seattle Kraken, like that, that's pretty like a pretty cool mascot, Kraken. Plus their, their jersey concepts look pretty it's kind of like a teal, isn't it? They're kind of close to like Seattle's colors or the, the Seahawks colors, I mean. Yeah. And then they're supposed to have the first all energy efficient recyclable mm-hmm. arena. And then the ice is supposed to be also made of recycled materials. So we'll see how that works out. It should be cool. You know, Seattle is a market for hockey. So mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's all I had for today. Looking at my list here, I don't have any like miscellaneous points to throw out there. Um, I guess I mean the Olympics again, 13 days away or 11 days away, actually. Um, so yeah, we, we'll be diving into that. Um, and then as soon as that's done, um, preseason football is good, gonna be just around the corner too. So looking forward to that. Yeah, and then I guess I just have one quick quick piece of news here for the Euro final that happened over the weekend. Um, Italy continues. It's now 34 games in a row. They've gone without losing, which is the second, their second technically all time. Cause there's two teams with 35 um, that are number one. So yeah, it's cool to see them win. And then turns out on Twitter, this was predicted um, over eight years ago, in 2013, somebody posted that England was going to lose the Euro 2020 Euro final uh, on penalty kicks. And obviously in 2013, no one could have predicted that COVID was going to come. So it moved to 2021 and they ended up losing on penalty kicks. Um, who knows how, how you knew that, but uh, what a prediction. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there's some people too, like for like, NBA finals, Super Bowl predictions. They just, people just t- tweet random ass shit like 10 years ago, just on a whim. And then, cause you gotta think there's thousands of people who make predictions. So then oh, like, you gotta go back and eventually one of them, it, probably, probably somebody uh, like every year predicts something like five, 10 years in the past. It's just a matter of if they put it on social media or not and if people find it. Yeah, probably. I mean, I'm sure some people kind of they do the statistics of it. We're like, oh, in this many years, or we're expected to see uh, this team and this team match up in the Super Bowl, and like, um, I don't have that much time on my hands. And then some people just guess and they get lucky. But, <laughs> but yeah, um, I hope you want to wrap things up here today. Then, yeah, thank you everyone for stopping by. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe to our social media pages, which you can find in the link in our bio, uh, the description of our channel. Um, Also um, to you who, to you three who have won the uh, Stanley Cup bracket challenge, we've reached out to you guys and we will get you guys your orders here. Uh, Once we get them in, we'll keep you guys in touch of when that is going to be approximately. And um, yeah, like I said, mentioned before, um, hopefully we can have a, Kurt Benneker get on here. Uh, that'd be pretty awesome. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Sounds good. We'll be back on Wednesday for you guys. Uh, again, Wisconsin Wednesday. Continuing that tradition this week. We'll see you guys then. <laughs>